but I do think uh, the, the, when we make, our, when, as we go down this path, the American people will know the truth. And God says, these that shall reject him shall be shocked. So I felt like the Lord had told me to stop what I was doing, which is the Exodus, and put together before the impeachment actually happens in the house because there are three ways that this can actually go and all of them are going to be prophecy because he's not at impeachment means that he's actually removed from office in both the house and senate that will not occur but there are three different paths that this can go and i'm not going to go beneath the belt on this i went a little beneath the belt on mueller mueller you sort of deserved it you didn't even look good for the people that put you up to this it's a fact man we have to be ready it is uh it's a very, uh, our founders, I always like to say this, our founders, in the darkest days of the revolution, they said, the times have found us. Socialism. Where we will, where they have said, we will make history without God. No, you will not. We also talk about the founders. What's very interesting is that the chairman talked a lot about the founders from the quotes, and, and again, this is why we have the hearing, about the founders being concerned about foreign influence, but what he also was, didn't quote was the founders being really, really concerned about political impeachment. You're trivializing impeachment, and I tell you what, someday there'll be a Democrat president, and there'll be a Republican House, and I suspect they're going to remember it. So Adam Schiff today opened up today's hearing with a completely absolutely made up account of the call that Donald Trump had with the Ukrainian president. Well, it reads like a classic organized crime shakedown. Because I'd like to see the whistleblower who's a fraud. The whistleblower wrote a false report. And I really blew it up when I released the transcript of the call. And then Schiff gets up and he, and I blew him up too, because he went up in front of Congress and he made a statement about what I said that was totally false. To endeavor, to reach the endeavors that God says, hear me tonight, hear me today. I have this whole thing planned out. And then a long time after he made it, when he got caught, he said, oh, uh, that was a uh, parody, parody. Now, Schiff is a crooked, he's a corrupt politician. I hear what you want. I have a favor I want from you, though. And I'm going to say this only seven times, so you better listen good. I want you to make up dirt on my political opponent, understand lots of it. And by the way, don't call me again. I'll call you when you've done what I asked. Uh, except that's not at all what happened. But he went up there, you know that, he made a totally false statement. The whistleblower wrote a totally false statement. So it's a fraud. Then I say, where is the informer, the one that informed the whistleblower? You had an informer. He disappeared. You know why he disappeared? Because I released the transcript. This is not a real thing. We have the transcript of the phone call that the whistleblower, who is an anonymous nobody, is whistleblowing about. So why do we care what this random whistleblower thinks about a phone call that we all have? There is also another man by the name of Donald. You are both watching me saying, could it be that God's speaking to me? Yes, he is. <coughs> the chairman has talked about impeachment since last year when he was elected chairman. Two years ago, November 6th, 17th, before he's even sworn in as chairman. Hoax, I guess you could call it, because it, it is a hoax. And Nancy Pelosi knows it. By the way, they duped her yesterday. She was on an interview. And she said, we've been working on this for two and a half years. So she's, she was working on it, in other words, two years before we ever spoke to Ukraine. That's right. Are you taking it from there? Well, we've been on that path for a while, and when we do get to where we're going, we're going to be ready. But it feels like we've been on the path for a really, really yeah. long while. Wait, when I, I did. Let me say this. We did win this. North Dakota. This is and the India. most unfortunate thing. We came in here in good faith, uh, and, and, and we're entering into a of this kind of a discussion in the public view. But it's not bad, Red, Nancy. Red, no, and, no, it's called transparency. I, I, I know. This is you know what? We need public. border security. This That's what we're going to be talking about, border security. There will be a praying president, not a religious one. But I will fool the people, says the Lord. I will fool the people. Yes, I will. 
God says, the one that is chosen shall go in and they shall say he has hot blood. We urge you to take it. And if it's not good border security, I it won't take it. It is very good border security. And if it's security. not good border security, I won't take it. It's what the Because when you look at these numbers, of the effectiveness of our border security. And when you look at the job that we're doing you with our military- You just said it is effective. Can I be, can I tell you something? Yeah, you just said Without it's effective. Without a wall, these are only areas where you have the walls. We want to do Where you have walls, Chuck, it's effective. We, where you don't have walls, it is not effective. Yeah. For the Spirit of God says, yes, he may have hot blood, but he will bring the walls of protection on this country in a greater way, and the economy of this country shall change rapidly, says the Lord of hosts. Please don't characterize the strength that I bring to this meeting as the leader of the House Democrats who just won a big victory. Elections but have me, consequences, Mr. Just, President. Let me just say. That's right. And that's why the country this. is doing so well. But the President is Listen to the word of the Lord. God says, I will put at your helm for two terms. A president that will pray, but he will not be a praying president when he starts. I will put him in office and then I will baptize him with the Holy Spirit and my power, says the Lord of hosts. Come on! Last night, Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced that the House of Representatives would begin a formal impeachment inquiry of President Trump. You're watching me, you're an influential person. The Spirit of God says, hear the word of the prophet to you as a king. I will open that door that you prayed about. And when it comes time for the election, you will be elected. The founders being really, really concerned about political impeachment because you just don't like the guy. I strongly support Speaker Pelosi's decision. If we don't reckon with President Trump's persistent transgressions, the very foundation of this great republic is at risk. To stop allowing this president to make a mockery out of our constitution. Could you tell me why you filed illegal tax returns in 2014 and 2015? On the Itzwich Committee? It's time for us to impeach this president. And they prescribed a remedy, and that remedy is impeachment. They will shout, impeach, impeach, but this shall not happen. Now, there was a big debate within the Democratic Party about how many articles of impeachment to bring against Donald Trump. But in the end, they decided to strike with surgical precision. President Trump now facing two charges as the top Democrats of the key committees stood together to announce it all this morning. Abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. Democrats have decided to narrow the scope of impeachment to the two articles of impeachment that... Yes, only two articles of impeachment. They will shout impeach, impeach, but this shall not happen. The good news for Trump is that he's only facing two charges. And then God says, highly embarrassing moments when another Snowden arises. But you have to go down that path when you're as ready as you can possibly be. And you don't know that until you go down the will path. Will we be ready before the year 2020? <laughs> yeah, we will. We will be ready? Okay, all right. The Speaker yeah. of the House is here. We're going to take a break. Okay. We'll be right back with Nancy Pelosi. Okay, so the first way that this can go down, which is actually, and the prophecies don't tell me this, of the three ways, is that Democrats could actually lose in their own majority-controlled Democrat House. That would be really, really embarrassing. I have this wild feeling, and I'm just guessing here, because there's three different paths. I have a feeling that it passes, that they go ahead and pass it, even by a narrow margin. If, in fact, they do, that leaves us with two options left in the Senate, which I... I it's just me guessing, but I believe prophecy probably lies more there. And I'll tell you why in a minute. This brings us to, within that prophecy, this word, highly embarrassing moments. Now, when Kim talks about this new Snowden that arises, take note of the fact that that comes directly following the impeach, impeach. He says this twice. Impeach, impeach, they say, but nay, I haven't even played that clip yet. Nancy Pelosi, Schumer, Schiff, and others, I would be very, very nervous of those words. A new Snowden arises. And that's irrelevant which of the three paths they take to not get their impeachment. But it seems to revolve around this name Stone. We'll get to that in a minute. And also, there's something interesting about the dates of all these prophecies leading to now. Before we get there, I'd like to talk about the hardcore left's 
all the news outlets are all comedy shows. You guys on the left, I would notice some of that, and it's getting more and more extreme. Just bear with me. Let me go there a sec. But before we get to that, let me just impress you real quick. Let me let the Lord impress you real quick with these clips because the tapes, when these tapes of Kim Clement go forward to the future. He died just a few days after Donald Trump became president. Let me note for the record, he also prophesied Obama becoming president, George Bush becoming president, Clinton beating the other Bush to become president. All of these people have used Kim Clement as advisors. In fact, Barack Obama used Kim Clement's words as part of his campaign slogans. I see in the future and you look better than you look right now. He must have been talking about Trump. These prophecies in their tapes all go in an order. Here's the one about the Dow hitting 20,000 right after Trump becomes elected. At how he takes the giant down. But God said, watch, I said 20,000. Look not to Wall Street, however, observe. And they shall say, what is your plan for this, this giant? And he will take a simple stone. Remember the name. Now, here's the one leading in the same tape where we're heading towards the impeach, impeach, just like they had two articles of impeachment. Right before that, in the same tape, he's talking about going into North Korea. The Spirit of God says one more thing I want to talk to you about. That little dwarf in North Korea. I'm getting a little tired of him. I think I'm going to go and pay him a visit, says the Lord. You watch and see what I do. Come on, come on. And that will be a big sign that the man that I'm sending with a stone for the giant is emerging, says the Lord. Yes, only two articles of impeachment, abuse of power and obstruction of Congress which means the Democrats are showing a lot of restraint because, I mean, let's be honest, Trump has done enough crazy shit to merit 2,000 articles of impeachment. Yeah, there was obstruction of justice from the Mueller report, using the presidency to enrich his businesses, the porn star payoffs, flag molestation, the time he looked directly into an eclipse, and of course, having Don Jr. I mean, that's impeachment on its own. Trevor, I actually appreciate your, your commentaries on this because both you and Kim Clement are, are from, actually from South Africa. Your last name, Noah. I like that last name. I would watch some of the comments, particularly comments, comments about black women, though, women that disagree with you, no matter what color that they are. And issues that come out of South Africa, those are sensitive. They're killing and the president over there. Ramaphosa is correct when he says they're murdering both blacks and whites. President Trump would agree that needs to be shut. Even Ramaphosa agrees. Why make light of it, Trevor? Any of it. Nobody should be murdered on their farms or properties in South Africa. But going back, I've seen the Spirit of God, Trevor. Flow, the Holy Spirit flow out of black, white women, black women, whatever women. For any other immigrant group. This is Candace Owens. And at 29, she is the most influential young black conservative voice in American politics. Black support for Donald Trump has doubled since this time last year. You guys can try to pretend that he is pushing in a racist era in this country when in fact we know the Democrats are the racists, have always been the racists. The left is incredibly good at linguistics. Planned Parenthood. That sounds nice. I want to plan my parenthood. But in reality, they're murdering babies. The highest court in the land, the Supreme Court. Two shall step down for the embarrassment of what shall take place. For I wish to place in the highest court in the land righteousness. And they shall attempt to put others in to endeavor, to reach their endeavors. But God says, hear me tonight. Hear me today. I have this whole thing planned out. When you see Sotomayor and Kagan, tell them that Lindsay said hello, oh, because I voted for them. I would never do to them what you've done to this guy. This is the most unethical sham since I've been in politics. And if you really wanted to know the truth, you sure as hell wouldn't have done what you've done to this guy. Are you a gang rapist? No. 
I cannot imagine what you and your family have gone through. Boy, y'all want power. God, I hope you never get it. I hope the American people can see through this sham. I'm going to be honest. And he treated us like we are victims. The things that I learned in the hood are very conservative principles. Welfare, lamb for the slaughter. You make money, somebody comes up to you and says, give me 35% of your money, what are you going to do? Excuse me? <laughs> give you what? Give me your gun? Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. These are very conservative principles that we are raised with, but we don't even know it. That you knew about it and you held it. You had no intention of protecting Dr. Ford. None. She's as much of a victim as you are. God, I hate to say it because these have been my friends. But let me tell you, when it comes to this, you're looking for a fair process. You came to the wrong town at the wrong time, my friend. While there are only a few hundred people at this summit wearing Blexit t-shirts, there are thousands more online. And as long as black Americans have had the right to vote, there have been black Republicans. But there has never been the community activism and recruitment than that created by the rise of social media. And one such influencer in this space is Antonia Okafor, a Second Amendment rights activist and conservative speaker. Yesterday, a horrific incident took place at Texas Tech University. A student took his gun and shot a campus police officer in the head. Why am I a campus carry activist? For this very reason. Lindsey Graham, in these last clips, of course, he's raking them over the coals for spending months and months and months. They had a lady alleging rape against Trump's Supreme Court justice nominee because the nominee was against abortion. He's allowed to be against abortion. You don't accuse somebody. Why there's not somebody in jail for that, I don't know. Because remember how the president's been saying that the whole Russia investigation was a biased conspiracy against him? Well, he demanded that the Justice Department look into the Russia investigation. And guess what they found? Yeah, not great for Donald Trump. The report did find misconduct by some FBI agents, but overall, it said that the Russia investigation was justified and there was no anti-Trump bias. In fact, The Daily Show, where you are now, I used to be involved in the groups that would deliver the content, some of the content that made fun of Republicans, just as you're doing now to The Daily Show by Jon Stewart. And then my spirit and my heart changed. So I know people can change. But I can tell you, the spirit of the Lord, Trevor, can flow out of anybody. I'm gonna pray for you as opposed to belittle you at all. And I'm glad that the Lord has, look man, can I at least ask this of The Daily Show? I don't know whether you're a citizen of the United States or not. I know you're from South Africa. But you've been honored in this land. Is it too much to ask not to belittle our country and yours at The Daily Show? And when I say defraud the FISA court, I mean it. To your team, you are able to uncover and discover abuse of power I never believed would actually exist in 2019. How bad is it? Is as, it was, is, was as if J. Edgar Hoover came back to life. The old FBI, the FBI that had a chip on its shoulder and wanted to intimidate people and find out what was going on in your life and the law be damned. Okay, this is going to become important if these matters, go, this impeachment matter with Schiff and Pelosi and all these sort of nefarious games get passed over to the Senate. This right here is Lindsey Graham. He's the chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Now, the Democrats are having trouble even within the Democrats. They're losing Democrats, which is what bipartisan means. So only Democrats in the Congress are voting, or only Democrats in the House are, are actually going after the impeachment of Trump. There's no Republicans going for it. And of the Democrats, you're losing those. So you can imagine this only gets worse in the Senate, which is Republican held. Thanks to a lot of hard work by people from Mr. Horowitz, the FBI, and others, here's what we know. Struck, the frontline supervisor, August 8, 2016, three days before Struck was named the frontline supervisor. He's not ever going to become president, right? Page to Struck. Struck, no, no, he won't. We'll stop it. 
These are the people in charge. August 15, 2016. I want to believe the path you threw out for consideration in Andy's office, that there's no way he gets elected. But I'm afraid we can't take that risk that the American people will pick their president, is what they're saying. It's like an insurance policy. In the but I mean, and there are words getting tossed around loosely here about top politics, you know, the haze around the Clintons and this sort of, you know, words like treason are becoming more and more. That's why, I mean, I would be nervous if I were any of these cats that have been playing these games. There's an old saying, man, keep it off front street. And a lot of this stuff, they should have just kept their mouths shut and left Trump alone because they're into so much filthiness themselves. You've got one, Peter Strzok, one of the FBI agents, got caught basically red-handed. May 18th, 2017, the date Page accepted a position on the special counsel's team. For me, in this case, I personally have a sense of unfinished business. One more assistant director, or whoever, an investigation leading to impeachment. May 2017. He's an anti-Trump guy as well. Strzok's emails, this is the top top FBI agent, or one of them, right there, F Trump, F Trump, we gotta stop Trump, we gotta get an insurance policy against Trump, we gotta do anything we can. At the FBI, according to Mr. Horowitz, doctored an email from the CIA to the FBI, and he's gonna be referred for criminal prosecution. Why is that important? Carter Page, who's been on the receiving end of all this, the foundation to believe he was a foreign agent comes from a dossier that we'll talk about in a minute. The Steele dossier that they're, that they're talking about, what that is, this is important to know about. So, the FBI didn't have any evidence on Trump during they're needing a way to get warrants to spy on an American citizen, namely Donald Trump. He knew this was going on. That's why he moved some of his campaign stuff from Trump Towers. That's why he moved it out of there, because the place was, he believed it was bugged. It was bugged. Who is Christopher Steele? You thought these other people were bad? <laughs> Wait till you hear about this guy. Christopher Steele was a former, uh, MI6, is that right? Six, five, whatever it is. He was a British agent. Retired. He had a new line of business. He was hired by a company called Fusion GPS to investigate Donald Trump. Okay. You want to look at foreign influence? You're about to find it. Fusion GPS is on the payroll of the Democratic National Party. Uh, those, those House, trust me, they're wanting to go. I mean, it sounds to me like not only have you got a new Snowden on the horizon, but more than that, the guys over there in the Senate, right, and that's above the House, are over there saying, come on, come on, come on, bring your cute documents this way. Bring us your impeachment files with all your names in there. Come on, bring them over. But California, I'm looking at you. Gold, stone, California, a smaller statue. And God says, once you recognize the man that I have raised up, pray. For the enemy will do everything in his power to put a witch in the White House. Did anybody hear what he just said? For Jezebel has chased away the prophets and even Elijah. Come on. Now I have said, go back. For this shall be dismantled so that there will be no more corruption in the White House, says the Spirit. But now, trailing down that same path, you also have prophecies about, uh, well, specifically, uh, okay, three rappers specifically. One is Eminem, one is 50 Cent, and of course, another one is Kanye West, as well as a list of others. Now, in Kanye's case, and this is footage, that, look, I'm not talking about stuff that's already out there. You've got worlds of stuff from Kim Clement that is 
back in old tapes that hasn't been released. But I'm talking about in Kanye's case. And I'm going to let Donna, who's on that text messages here, as well as her husband, um, release that on their, on their own channel, which would be House of Destiny and Donna Petruska tapes about Kim, if they choose to. They specifically have prophecies, well, for example, with what you got now, Kanye West just spoke at Joel Osteen's church and has been writing Christian songs. A lot of people have tried to criticize this. And be careful to do that, guys. How about the Jesus movement? That was led, by the way, in California by a black pastor. So, your new album, Jesus is King is the name of the album? Yes. When is this album coming out? Is it coming out tomorrow? It's going to be dropping 12, p 12 a.m. So, right now, right now, it is available. Oh, it's out now. Yeah, it's out now. Other guys, when, when I was there months and months and months back, early, way earlier this year, my dad went through a heart surgery. Kim's family, uh, I took care of the heart surgery part of it. They were the one that arranged for the doctor. Without such, my dad wouldn't be alive today. Um, John. And Donay's husband had gone to, just like in the text messages said, um, he went, in fact, later in the night, uh, that night, uh, I went and the young thug was there and I, I guess John had uh, been with Kanye earlier. And like sometime between those times, there was some type of a life change in Kanye West, just as was prophesied by Kim Clement. In fact, there's he had private scrolls for people like presidents, people like, it's my understanding, Mel Gibson, before he did The Passion of Christ, had a prophecy that he would do one of the most successful Christian movies there was. It's my understanding right now also, while I'm making this video, he's working on The Resurrection, which probably will also be a world blockbuster. And that was prophesied by Kim Clement. Now, some of these comedy shows, the same ones that are always pitching you all of these liberal views and shoving them down your throat. Not who you, and you gotta almost get sick. I certainly did. When I did any stuff around these kind of crowds, here's the way this really works. Well, I committed a sort of a safe robbery on him. I smashed a Cadillac. There's an image of me right there running with this. It looks more like Ryan Reynolds, but there's Mike. He looks sort of angry. Mike got him in this shot up here. They like to draw him angry. And back then I thought it was really big and cool and all that because I had magazines running stuff on me. The reason I had that is because I was involved in liberal organizations. I had this book with the one eye on the front, which the Lord told me, and at the time I put this, I didn't even think anything about it. At the time I put this together, uh, I believed I was doing the right thing. I was bad-mouthing somebody, just like they're doing on these shows. The Lord told me in my heart, don't do that. He said, pull it down. And the day that I, I took the book off the market, I had movie offers on this book, magazines. Or, um, I thought it was all really exciting. But the truth was, I had bad mouthed somebody else to lift myself up, which is what these shows do all day long, and misrepresent things in their own benefit with their own set of facts. <sighs> Whether they're going after Mike Murdoch, Creflo Dollar, Paula White, Joel Osteen, or a list of others that are all their usual suspects and the argument is always what? They bought a jet plane? I would ask them, I would say, does the other side not buy jet planes? No, this was always about attacking political opponents, successful political opponents. And I would state, to, I will never badmouth Mike Murdoch again. I will never badmouth. My theology may be different than theirs and a lot of this nine jillion theologies in Christianity. How could I agree with all of them? Maybe they did push the bar a little too far. I, I don't know. But I know they were successful Christians that stood up for There are some basic things in theology. Do we believe in Jesus? Yes. Yes. That man up there with a jet plane does. Do you think John Oliver doesn't have a jet plane? or any of these other shows and beyond this the information the data here's how this works right to get the information for the shows trevor you ought to listen as well because you're part of this you inherited from the daily show some of the places i was provided the information on the tv pastors for the evil republicans to their show here's how they got it they were digging through other people's trash so whether it's john oliver because i know how the information the data for this very show that we're looking at here was collected and let me note for the record that 
garbage collecting, like what the government was doing on all of us, as is displayed clearly in the Oliver Stone movie, Snowden, that the government is digging through our garbage. I could mean and reference these comedy shows metaphorically or, you know, just an opinion. Let's call it an opinion. But I was in the right circle of people to know these things. It was by crawling through other people's trash, right? And then the federal guys, just like in your case against Trump, let's call it the federal guys, will come in, kick in the doors, always declare that their IRS bank statements were wrong. There's nobody that does better with their taxes than these TV pastors because they know that guys like this guy here are having people crawl through their trash. People like Mike Murdoch have signs by their trash that say, at least put the garbage back after you finish digging through it. So John and his team, or Trevor and his team, or John before that. John Stewart, there's prophecies about you as well, my friend. And they're good. They're good. I might listen. God likes you. He finds you funny. I don't, it's, that's between you and God. But here's where they actually have signs. They say, at least put the trash back. And these guys don't even respect it. And then they'll have these civil attorneys come in and say, you know what? It looks like you're getting bad mouth on the big liberal shows, man, and they look foolish. Whether it's Creflo Dollar, whether it's Benny Hinn, my mother loves Benny's music. Quit crawling through his trash. Who cares that he likes a sparkly jacket? And who cares that he flies a jet plane? That sounds jealous to me. I mean, it, it doesn't change my lunch. People on the other end are suctioning off these people. Then they'll have their civil guys come in and say, you know what, for a basket of money, we can, we can stop all this. These are the same things that are happening to your president right now in the impeachment. And in my particular view, and I'd support any guys can call me, I can tell you about it. I can tell you about it deep. But here's where, when you're looking at these big comedy show guys, and that includes you, Trevor, all I see is some men sitting on thrones made of garbage. But let me pause on that because I've been garbage in my life too, man. I smashed their TV past this gates. Maybe I took off his electronic doors. I was wrong. I sat on a pile of garbage. God can take your throne of garbage and turn it into a throne of gold. Again, Ambassador, thank you for your patience. Thank you for your service. But since we haven't been able to conduct ourselves in normal procedures, I'm just going to use the five minutes for this. September 29th in the Wall Street Journal, quote, the whistleblower at the center of the impeachment investigation of President Trump will testify in the House very soon. This is a quote by the chairman. USA Today, September 29th. Talking with ABC News this week, Schiff, the Democrat who chairs the House Intelligence Committee, said the whistleblower would testify very soon. And the only thing standing in the way was getting security clearances for the attorneys representing the whistleblower so they could attend the testimony. Okay, so before we get to names like Stone and other possible sort of interesting things here in the prophecies, I'm just going to lay some of this stuff in your hands so you can sort of do with it as you wish. Uh, third temple is on the back of this coin. At the temple, thieves, when Jesus was at the temple, this idiot book thieves, I had no right calling someone else a thief, like Mike Murdoch, because I was a thief. <laughs> Just like the, the Democrats now are projecting a bunch of stuff on Trump that is really what they're saying about themselves, just as I was doing here. It's not just that Jesus was calling them a den of thieves at their temple because they were selling stuff. They were doing that. But more than this, they were selling things like pigeons so you could buy an offering for a few bucks. You were supposed to lay down something that was valuable to you. When I was putting this book together, I was so excited because I thought, oh, I've always got this thing I can pull out of the back of my pocket. I robbed the TV pastor. That'll, that'll be something that uh, I felt like that was something I could pull out of my pocket and it would do well. And for a while it did. And then in my spirit, I knew the Lord had said, pull that down, pull that down, take it away. And I had friends say, no, 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 just cut a movie deal, just cut a movie deal. They just said, don't worry about it, just, just cut it, you'll have money for your family and all this. And I began to cry in that old crummy RV. and say, how am I going, Lord, how am I even going to live? How am I going to, come on, man, just let me, just let me, let me cut it, cut a deal on it. And I made some good relationships during that time. But on one particular day, it turned out to be the Day of Atonement, <laughs> Yom Kippur, that I pulled the book down. I didn't know anything about Hebrew dates. 
from Vox. September 29th, Rep. Adam Schiff said Sunday the whistleblower at the center of a growing scandal surrounding President Donald Trump will testify before the House Intelligence Committee very soon. On CNN, September 29th, Schiff said Sunday on ABC as well as NBC's Meet the Press that he expects the whistleblower to testify very soon. It just happened to be the day. I was crying and I just said, screw it, I'm taking it down. Just doing it to get it all off of my, my mind, my conscience, my heart. And then I realized that title, Thieves, right? She's got the little one eye on there, right? Um, at the temple, you were supposed to lay down something that you did not want to give up. That was why Jesus was so angry. It was something that would cost you something. And it was at that point that I really began to know who the Lord was. By taking something down that cost, that at that time, cost me something. And I began to really go full for it with the Lord. And He began to show me things. And a lot of these things that were fears went away. And it's going to happen as well. It already is with your president, with your leaders, with, from sea to shining sea and around this globe. Laying down things that are valuable to them. The garbage. The garbage. In return for gold. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff said Sunday that an agreement has been reached under which the whistleblower will testify before the committee very soon. I can keep going, but again, the chairman refused to uh, allow us to put these into the record with unanimous consent. How do we kill the giant of debt? How do we kill the giant of socialism? How do we kill the giant of human secularism? I have placed that man amongst you. Take all these little, little remarks I'm giving you. They, they are gems. The name and the word gold. And God says, These that shall reject him shall be shocked. In terms of options on this, this word stone, I've got a couple of them, two of them actually. One is, this behind me is infamous movie director Oliver Stone. He's one of my favorite movie directors actually growing up. I loved the movie Alexander, JFK. I was into these kind of things. I was a giant movie buff. Oliver Stone actually had a wide range of critical commentaries about the Ukraine and the US's policy there, which drives back to the original complaint within this impeachment process, right? Because Donald Trump had made a phone call stating, uh, looks like there's some shady business going on with Biden's son, right? In the Ukraine. Anyhow, whatever the case, about the time. In nations throughout the earth, and my fist is about to smack down on Russia. For out of the rebellion, turn me up just a little. Out of the rebellion of the Ukraine, which was seen by my prophet, shall come out of those ashes beauty. Shall come out of that sadness joy. Shall come out of those garments praise, says the Lord. I have searched for a man and a woman who would stand in the Oval Office and pray and call for the restoration of the fortunes of Zion. I have looked for a man who would pray for the restoration of the fortunes of Zion. Therefore, if you hear my heart, says the Lord today, I will take you on a journey. I will first take you to Israel whom they would give Jerusalem to his enemies. Why would they give half of Jerusalem away? This will not happen, says the Lord. For I will take you on a journey today into Jerusalem, where it shall be prophesied to song by my prophet what I intend doing in Jerusalem and in the United States of America at the same time, says the Lord. But today we finally acknowledge the obvious.
that Jerusalem is Israel's capital. This is nothing more or less than a recognition of reality. And also, there's nearly zero chance that Oliver Stone knew about these prophecies prior to putting the movie Snowden together. I, the, um, about the time I was doing the Nephilim, I had talked back, before, I had the honor, and that's one of the reasons it is like highlighted to my attention. I've, I've had the honor to talk to um, the family of one of my favorite movie directors. Amongst them stood one that God had set aside to be the leader of this nation. I said, why am I hearing this so soon? Surely you would show me a little bit of it closer to the time. They will shout, impeach, impeach, they say. But nay. This nation shall come very subtly. But he shall not come in the time of President Obama. They shall come when this new one arises, my David. All right, the Lord has allowed... I would just lay that thing, this name Stone there, attached to Snowden and criticisms of U.S. policy, directly intelligence U.S. policy and corruption in the Ukraine from Oliver Stone. Option number two. So I know I find the Oliver Stone, Snowden movie, all these things, and the timing of them, really coincidental. One would nearly have to be blind not to put in full view and focus Roger Stone. And it can be all, it can be none, it can be any of these things that I'm mentioning. I'm just bringing them up. And accordingly, right after impeach, impeach, they say, but nay, the next words are... But God says, I have set him aside. They will shout, impeach, impeach, but this shall not happen. And then God says, highly embarrassing moments when another Snowden arises. And they shall say, what is your plan for this, this giant? And he will take a simple stone. Remember the name. And he will hold it up and they will laugh at him. But the plan is so brilliant, says the Lord. It could only have been given by me. Now, they commonly compare this Donald Trump impeachment, right? The left has been comparing it to Nixon. And there's Roger Stone right next to Nixon. Coincidentally, he's got a tattoo of Nixon on his back. He was an advisor to Nixon. Nixon was an honest guy. Nixon actually supported Israel because he had a prophecy given to him by his mother that Israel would be in a time of need, he would help him. He's getting attacked. And that's the truth of the matter. He was an honest guy. He did less than any of your current politicians, excluding Trump, have done. Certainly less than Biden, but of course he's also an advisor, a close advisor, that was a close advisor. He's a friend of the U.S. President, Donald Trump. He was the one, as I understand it, that put Trump's name on the ballot for the third time. Now, speaking of threes and sevens, they accused Roger Stone of seven felonies. Now, Schiff, back here, in his impeachment of Trump, which is kind of the finality of accusing a lot of people that were surrounding Trump of misdeeds, trying to dig through the garbage, if you will, to find something, anything, we call that fishing. Well, seven times in his bogus statement, it appears to be lies, it is lies. I hear what you want. I have a favor I want from you, though. And I'm going to say this only seven times, so you better listen good. I want you to make up dirt on my political opponent. Understand lots of it. Is what it is. He, in his bogus phone call that he made up about what Trump said on the call, he says, I'm only going to ask this seven times. Now, if I hop over from Shifty Schiff to our Trump prophecies, where we'll take a simple stone, remember the name, 
Now I'm gonna bring you up here the top of the screen. That would be February 22nd of 2014. If I add seven years to that, or seven, 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 seven years to that date, well, Roger Stone's sentencing date on his seven felonies, his seven bogus felonies, is in February of this year, exactly seven years to the month from that prophecy about a stone. I don't know what you're gonna do with that. Okay, so now coming back over to the Bidens and of course Hunter and our, our misdealings or whatever they may be with the Ukraine, right? Well, Joe appears to be on tape doing the same, th worse than what they're even accusing Trump of. I mean, he's literally withholding aid, I guess, if I'm understanding properly, to get a prosecutor fired from investigating dirt in the Ukraine that would benefit his family. So they said they had, they were walking out to press conference, said, no, I said, I'm not going to, we're not going to give you the billion dollars. They said, you have no authority. You're not the president. The president said, I said, call him. I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours. I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. You got fired. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. And it appears the money is going to, well, let me let somebody else tell it about Hunter. And uh, here's, here's what it says. Hunter said that at that point, he had not slept for several days. Driving east on Interstate 10, just beyond Palm Strings, he lost control of his car, which jumped the median and skidded to a stop on the shoulder of the westbound side. He called Hertz, which came to collect the damaged car and gave him a second rental. The Hertz rental officer told me he found a crack pipe in the car and on one of the consoles, a line of white powder residue. Bo Biden's attorney general badge was on the dashboard. Hertz called the Prescott Police Department and officers filed a narcotics offense report listing items seized in the car, including a past plastic bag containing white powdery substance, a Secret Service business card, credit cards, and Hunter Biden's driver's license. That is what we would call evidence. And I don't want to make light of anybody's substance abuse issues. I know the president's working real hard to solve those throughout the country, but it's a little hard to believe that Burisma hired Hunter Biden to resolve their international disputes when he could not resolve his own dispute with Hertz rental car over leaving cocaine and a crack pipe in the car. Now, now speaking of 777s, I've got one more from you. In the prophecies leading towards Trump becoming president, you have another name, Trump will be a trumpet, has this other name, Clark attached. Now, just with the stone business, I mean, God can, just like the book of Revelations, you have a number of layers to everything. You may have a larger scope layer and an underlying exact layer. There is a man by the name of Mr. Clark and there is also another man by the name of Donald. You are both watching me say, could it be that God speaking to me? Yes, he is. <sighs> Mentions this name, Clark. And I don't know, unwittingly, my friend Scotty Clark, who may have got a lot wrong, was doing prophecies about Trump and signs in the sky that had a lot of sevens in them. Let me play you the clips. These are old God in Nutshell clips. The Third Temple in Israel. And you're owning a piece of history. Scott Clark, this one's coming to you. I still owe you a coin. Scott was the one that was on the phone with me while people were saying these were a conspiracy. And they're made, by the way, by the book. You're holding something historical in your hands. One of these, not a knockoff, but one that's in my hand. You're holding something genuine. Not only is this little video here going up right the weekend before the election, but on our Prophecy of Trump video, it had pulled 700,000 views in seven days on October 7th. And that clock right there started from the moment after the upload when we approved it for public view. He would be, uh, on the day of uh, the presidential inauguration, the day he puts his hand on the Bible and goes through the oath of the presidency, he would be 70 years old and seven months and seven days. That would be his age and it would actually happen in the Hebrew year of five, seven, seven, seven. <laughs> Is that a coincidence? I don't know. 
You don't see that every day. What you're holding, you're holding an actual one of the things that people call a conspiracy. It was Scott back there on the phone. Scott, welcome back to the Prophecy business. I knew your sign in the sky at the time. I knew somehow that was going to play a role in prophecy. You know, I was looking through all those old tapes, like old stuff that you see when you see entities. You look at it and say, wow, <laughs> there was more to it than I even saw at the time that I was making it. These coins right here are by the book. They have the amount of silver in them that is required by Levitical law for it is a third temple coin. And these are made in coordination with the Sanhedrin of Israel. As far as I know, God in a nutshell is the only people that have cut a deal with Israel on these coins and with the Sanhedrin. So the final two possibilities of the total three is that the majority, the House Democrats, pass this and it goes on to the Senate. It either goes long or it goes short. Long would mean that, well, that there's a trial, and next, I'm sort of guessing that it might go that direction any way that you cut it, any way the three. Highly embarrassing moments for some portion of Democrats. Actually, politicians, Republicans, Democrats, like, look, cleaning the swamp means cleaning the swamp. And, I, I, and for me, I actually feel some of this is kind of embarrassing and hits home because I've got Democrats in my family that are friends that are, come on, man, none of my Democrat friends. It's not like I feel better if they get tomorrow, oh, you know what, we like the Republican Party more because of people like Pelosi. And that's not going to change my lunch tomorrow. Um, look, when they feel upset, with people like Pelosi, my Democrat friends, that upsets me because they're my friends. This ain't John F. Kennedy. This is Nancy Pelosi style. It just it makes great television, but it looks bad. I have a surprise couple of things coming out over the holidays. One of them is titled Nimrod. You're gonna like this. Let me surprise you. I took time out of filming on this and on the Exodus because I felt it was important to do this thing. It's like the Lord put on my heart, stop now, do a crash course through a lot of, pro and enough even to compel people that I disagree with a lot and to be kind to them, which I, I didn't do in a past video and I felt wrong in my heart, my spirit about it. Something that just lays out, something compelling and uplifting for all of them over the holidays, which I feel like this was, even though it's more of a raw edit than Look guys, I did a crash course over the last 48 hours in putting this together and stopped filming on Nimrod and Exodus to do it. There are some surprises coming out over the holidays. Exodus will be out right after the holidays. I've been, this year we ran into sort of some crises and calamities ourselves. I won't go into that, but I invite you to come over to God in a nutshell. Some of these things might even be out at the time that you're, you're looking at this video. Anyway you cut it, our sets. If you haven't seen entities in the past, some of our old stuff, man, I was going through it and realizing how prophetic even that stuff was. Entities, I watched that the other night. It's even got misspellings in it, right? Because I, I, in one part of it, I've got Israel misspelled on the screen, giant behind me. And I remember when I was putting that together, man, I was devastated. In the Nephilim video, I misspelled the unspeakable name of God at one point in the video, big on the screen behind me. And it was up, and, it, and people pointed this out, and they said, how could you possibly misspell the unspeakable name of God? Then I did it again, and it is it like some of the climactic parts. Man, I was so crushed. And we'd sold a lot of copies of the videos, and I, and I, and I was like, man, I always wish I could go back and redo that. And then I look at those today, and after it's been years later, we're actually watching a copy of Entities, and it got to that part where the Israel, it was spelled Israel, right? And I thought, that's even telling, because God does these plays on words, Israel, Israel. Um, and I looked at it, I remember being up late at night, being edited, and I'm putting together the graphics myself. I'm doing, and almost like, like a signature, you know, they, those little imperfections almost mean more to me than had I got it spelled right in the video and most people didn't even notice it anyway if I would not brought it up but um, to me it's almost a signature of authenticity on some of those old things but I was watching I was like wow this is one of the most this is why people might watch it's the Lord all glory in every video 
every single thing, including Exodus, we're, we're going to knock your socks off. There is nothing like the, buy the ticket, take the ride. But you're going to have to wait till after the holidays. I've got a full length thing that's a surprise coming for Christmas that's, you're going to like it, I think. It's not a political thing. We're going pre flood and Nimrod all the way. There's a hint at it. It's almost, it's pretty much done. I stopped to do this. My name is Trey Smith. Come over if you felt like making a donation to us. We could use that as well, particularly this year. I'm Trey Smith. God bless every last one of you. Republican, Democrat, I don't care what you believe. All of you, even the comedy show guys. I mean the dog on you a little bit. Look, if you can shove it, you can take it. I'm Trey Smith. God bless every last one of you and your families on the other side of the screen.